Hey everybody, Wayland here. Got a few things I'm gonna cook on this pellet pro behind me. I hope you got to see my last video about cooking a brisket on it. I cooked two briskets and uh, I was very impressed. So I know this is all pretty much gonna go really well. I'm very excited. I've got ribs, a ham, and two pork shoulders. Mmm. Okay, anyways, I like to remove the membrane and I will use a mustard slather or binder. Um, off any piece that you think won't make it out alive. Sometimes I'll square off the ends. Um, take the last bone or this piece. I got three rack of rib ready. I took off, trimmed a little where I thought necessary. Took off the um, membrane on the back. So the barbecue seasoning of your favorite, some of your favorite barbecue. Amazing. Okay. Yeah, it's fine. Pretty easy. I'm gonna lower the rack, maybe. 
rib rack, so forgive me. this stuff on my pork. Uh, I don't even know how to begin to tell you what it is. Definitely got some paprika and some uh, garlic and onion powder. Um, it's actually a medley of things that I put together from Winco Foods. They have their bulk uh, aisles and their bulk seasonings. So this stuff has sh some sugar in it. And, uh, yeah, um, a few things. It's always so hard to hold these pork shoulders. I always feel like I'm scuffing the bark before I even get started. Sharp knife goes a long way. Now this is fully cooked and this ham is actually for us this evening. i um, gonna just get, I mean it's fully cooked smoked ham. You're supposed to just bring it up to temperature. I like to get a little bit more smoke on it. And then I wrap it to put some uh, glaze on it. And I finish it in the oven. So, I just like to prepare it a little bit before I put it on. I 
like to get this stuff off. Seems to come out very good off the skin. Look, I have no idea. I buy pieces of meat and do to them what I think tastes best. So, and then I like to score it just a few times around. Um, I don't go too deep. And then I also. Put some of this on there. Yeah. 
Ooh. Salt, dehydrated garlic, onion, spices. Yeah, some molasses, corn syrup. So, quite the mixture. It's uh, Butcher's Barbecue in Wellston, Oklahoma. Their signature blend. So, I am just trying something new. My uh, buddy gave me this. Whoops. I already opened it. I thought so. He's definitely on your shirt. It's okay. Why can't I get it open? Oh. It says lift. There we go. Oh, yeah, this smells pretty good. So, later this is going to be wrapped in a glaze, anyways. I'm just trying to get a little, maybe. Oh, it does smell good, yeah. Get a little something on this thing. I don't know why I didn't season it first. The whole ham. I am funny. It's okay, I'm making this up as I go. I'm no professional. You're making this up? Yeah. I'm gonna take a look. <laughs> it's alive. Before eyes. <laughs> <laughs> So excited about this. Yeah, they have a play date. I know I have to make a play date, but I'm going to play date. Yeah. 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 All right, so I already put a couple wood chunks down in there, and uh, it was smoking a good bit earlier. I'm going to check back in a little bit and double check. Uh, I'm going to check back in a little bit to see if I need to add more wood in to try to keep this thing producing smoke tastes. All right, so been a uh, couple hours. We're looking at uh, it's 4.42, so I start about 2 o'clock. So I'm interested in what these things look like. Let's see. There was one point that um, not long after I had started it that I added a couple more logs. Oh, oh that's looking so good. Okay, I'm ready to go ahead and pull that and wrap it. Um, mm. But anyways, not long after I had uh, started I had double check to see if it needed some logs. I noticed when I first turned it on, the couple logs that I put in there must have got consumed pretty quick. So anyways, I'm going to pull that ham. I'm going to wrap it, put it in a full tray, put foil over it, and I'm going to finish it, catch the juices, get it up to temp, and then glaze it with the juices, brown sugar, honey, and butter. And then I will continue to monitor the ribs and the pork shoulders until they need to be wrapped. Before I pull this ham, I'd like to get a closer look at these ribs. But anyways, the bark kind of got weird there is touching the other meat. So I may have done something wrong, need to pay more attention. I'm just gonna kind of flip it around though and give it a little bit more space from the other ones. This one though that was up top looks just fine. It's starting to be pliable. 
Stick it back in at 275 and hope that it finishes. Rookie mistake, I didn't start earlier at church and stuff. Um, didn't start earlier to make sure this ham was done on time for supper. I'm gonna spritz those ribs and pork shoulder, pork butt, with apple cider vinegar and water. It looks a little dry. And I think I need to I'm gonna add water to these water cans. Splits. Um, usually, you know, I have logs the eight big or so for my offset. So I have uh, quite a bit of this around. So this is kind of short. This this doesn't quite fill up this diffuser plate. Um, with you know on the sides where the wood can go in, but it's worked. So I'm gonna, I'm just gonna shove these in if they fit and um, add some more wood taste to to this. Things. Uh, I would say I feel like I do got to get in here and do this every now and then. Uh, not bad. I mean, you always have to tend to uh, offset fire. So, you know, tending to a fire is no big deal for me. But this is a little more complicated to get in and out. Let's 
see these ribs. everything again um, yeah okay this ham is probing pretty close to that now cool we've got the juices down in here oh sweet I'm gonna stick this back in uncovered See if I can uh, add some more smoke to it, especially since I just stuck logs on a little bit ago. Oh, I'm gonna prepare that glaze used in ham drippings. I'm actually gonna turn this down. Uh, I'll put uh, some brown sugar, honey, pineapple juice, and this ham drippings stove, get it all melted together, and that's what I'm going to pour over the top of this ham, uh, and then slice it. Okay, so I'm actually happy with this ham. I've got the glaze ready. Oh, beautiful. I'll leave your pineapples down in the tray. And I typically get rid of the um, cloves. You don't want to eat. The cloves aren't very tasty, uh, <laughs> if you ask me. Um, I just like the flavor they add to the ham. You definitely don't want to eat a clove, so... I've had people say um, they're not fond of cloves and then come to find out it's because they've actually eaten it. So get your toothpicks out. Oops. Get your cloves out. Oh. Yes. I could pull it apart. I'm going to do some slices and I'm going to put it in the tray and cover it with the glaze. So, beautiful, fully cooked, smoky, juicy ham shank. So that's simple. I pretty much then take this and this will be basically your honey baked ham flavor with that smoke going on it. So. Anyways, everybody's gonna really love that. Mm -mm -mm. So, anyways, just one way to do ham. This thing is rocking, man. This this smoker is able to put smoke, cook really evenly, pretty fast. Set it to what temperatures you like, and rock and roll. So, anyways, I think we're gonna have supper while these other things kind of roll. I'm probably really going to be out just in the next 30 minutes to do those ribs, though. Uh, wrap them anyways. They were looking pretty good. All right. So now that ham was great. It was. <laughs> really good. I'm showing you the on the video. That's 
<laughs> Thank you. Actually, would you go get me a butter knife? Yeah. And a spoon. Granddaughters. What? What are they good for? If not, get you some utensils. Oh, can you give me the quick spoon? Thank you with the bunny on it. Thank you very much. All right. What I do is I put some butter down. I almost forgot. More. No. Uh, yeah, I'll need gloves, but I need more foil. Two, just in case this one tears. I'd do about four. I'm gonna put butter, brown sugar, Got some pullback on the ribs there. <laughs> Great color. Little pliable. Let me oh. guess, you want to put it in there. Yep. That's how I'm gonna do all three. I'm gonna wrap it. Put it back on a regular rack, I reckon. Until it's tender. Sides up. I don't want anything leaking out. Boom. I'm just putting them back in over here. Like that. I'd say in about an hour, I'm going to come back and make sure they get up to tenderness. Something like 200 degrees. You're looking for probe tender. Really, really the pliability, man. When you can pick those ribs up in that foil and just feel they're almost giving. If I didn't say how much I really like this thing, I think I'm going to put some more logs back in down there, um, but oh, they look so good. The temps are cooking so even, um, I'd say it's, it's, it's up a little because I've been opening the door and it has to recoup, but man, it really doesn't even burn up that crazy hot. Uh, okay, I'm finally about halfway with the pellets and this is my second cook. I've been in it for a few hours. It's seven, I've been cooking since uh, two, so it's five hours. Man, they look so good. So I think uh, I'm waiting on a little bit darker and the pullback maybe on the, bar on the bark or the fat, maybe that tear you get when you consider it ready. And then I will wrap them also. Ooh, see, so yeah, 
These have loosened up so nicely. those down you need to leave a little bit more time smoked but when you really want to get them cooking you want to be up to 75 so I've bumped it up now let's check these ribs out I want to see the temp I want to see probe tender and I want to see the pullback in color uh, excuse me You don't have allergies. Can you move, move to Oklahoma? Boom, you have allergies. Ooh. I'm gonna retain those juices. I really like putting that honey, that brown sugar like a glaze okay ah well see that the center bone uh, maybe that one just wanted to pull out but oh yeah nice so that honey that brown sugar creates that wonderful glaze they feel about right, almost too done in the center. That bone did want to come out, but I'm gonna check for probe tenderness. And temp, ooh, yeah. Yeah, 190, okay, this is tender, 195, 199. They're just so tender, see, so, and I like that fat render yeah they're all just almost 200 so we're talking right color right temp I just put that glove down in there that's what we're looking for and uh, I was pretty happy with how that felt. I'm going to leave this wrapped. This will actually rest this way also overnight. And then I will chop them in the morning. Okay, so I am gonna pull these pork butts. great looking uh, I should have rotated them because this one here is about where I'd like to see towards the back so uh, looks like maybe towards the back might run a little hotter um, smells so good smells so good but I'm actually gonna shut it down I do not need the pellet cooker anymore. I'm going to go ahead and stick these in the oven.
I have some more of that seasoning. I'll just add some more of that seasoning that I put on earlier. Piece of foil. And I will put these on a cookie sheet and I will put them, them in the oven at on the oven at 275 until it reaches an internal I'll set it to like 200 um, and then I'll be looking for it to be probe tender bigger one there you can put as much butter as you want um, guess maybe I was a little shy with the last one but the fat will render down too really you guys do your pork butts however you like I think the point of uh, my video here with this the last few videos is to really just showcase this double D um, this smoker, this new smoker that I got, do some cooks on it, make sure that I'm happy with these things that it's doing. I'm not gonna put a probe in this one. As soon as that one comes up to temp, this one should be not far behind it but I don't expect this larger one to finish first and at 275 in the oven it'll uh, cook pretty efficiently um, and uh, and now that it's wrapped I, I really unless I was to leave it for way too long I can't really do too much damage to it but there is that wonderful sweet spot where it releases the bone, the meat is super tender and juicy. And so that's where we're hoping to get. Again, usually just about 200, a little 205 between there and probe tender and you're pretty safe. So these look good. They come off here and it's night. I, I, don't, I don't have the best ability to show you. We'll see them a little bit more tomorrow in the daytime when I pull them apart. Oh. All right, so I had these pork ribs done yesterday, and left them wrapped overnight in my warmer at 150 degrees. Okay, well. So I've had these ribs resting overnight, wrapped in foil and all their juices. Mm.
This is one of the two that I let sit longer and they are overcooked. Darn, now they're good. So they are uh, falling off the bone though. So there's moisture there. These uh, outer ones are a little worse off than these, in these other ones here. So might've been that that part was facing the back. I did find out. Okay, that's a little better, but it is falling off the bone. It's a little bit more meat and stuff to it. I did find that the back of this cooker towards the back wall is hotter. And from here on out, I'm gonna have to be more mindful of rotating things periodically towards the back. These ones are looking good. Oh. Ah. Ooh, this one's better. Mm-hmm. Somewhere to put it. Mm, you can see the pull pullback though on this. Got some separation. It's about to fall off the bone there, so. Ooh hooey. That's amazing. Mm, just in time for lunch. So juicy. Mm. Great flavor. Mm. Mm. That's it. Okay, but a little bit of a cook failure though, a little overdone, kind of on about half of all of them. So probably the side that face back towards the back of the cooker. And then great taste, great cook taste, but definitely missing smoke. So I'm gonna have to learn how to dial that in a little better. could uh, do the same thing I did with the brisket and that's go ahead and run it on the smoke setting for a while and then start to drive temps up so if I want the ribs to be smoky I might not get to cook them as fast as I normally might or have to use the offset but um, usually it, ribs take nowhere near as long as as a brisket so um, you have a shorter window of time to put smoke taste on there so Anyways, I'll try another batch where I start them early, put them on the smoke feature, let them go low for a long time. See if that can pick up some more smoke taste. But I'm gonna cover these, uh, put them back in the warmer for, for later. And then uh, let's pull apart some pork butt. Ooh. juices okay so let's see if this bone pulls right out oh oh darn uh, well that is supposed to happen so thankfully that bone pulled right out 
that's a good indicator that I've got this all rendered and it should pull so easy. Oh, oh, oh no. It just squishes through my fingers. That too is good. That's what we want to see. I'm actually going to just pinch this all into small bits. That's all I like to do. I like to get that fat on top dug down in between. Oh, oops. I like to get that fat on top dug down in between. Let's see. So that uh, you're not just really dealing with um, I like to try to get that fat down, smash down into the into the meat. Separate the fat. Don't don't let the fat stay in the clumps, clumps because nobody wants a really fatty bite. But that top fat cap of this pulled pork had all that seasoning and flavor, and you want to get that into these into the bits of this. So. So I'm gonna take and I want to get those juices brought back up into the meat. Never drain out those juices. It, it is it is oily. It is fatty juices that you want this leaner meat in here that you find in here to absorb. The flavor is all there. Um, I when I first started saw a guy he would strain the fat and just put the put the jus back on, uh, but. I always found that the meat kind of dried out when I did that myself, so I began to just mash this all up down in those fat and juices, distribute that fat evenly, and everybody's been much more happy. Um, it's not noticeable, right? This It really pulls in this fat um, into the meat. Oh my goodness, so I, I hope you can, you can tell this stuff pulls so easy. It's so soft, but yet juicy. Mm, smells good too. I am curious of the smoke taste of this though. Also, I, I didn't really have much on the ribs. These were all pretty much cooking at the same time. This just finished different in this foil. It smells great. I mean, I know it's gonna be great flavor, but um, again, I'm always aiming for smoke, high smoke con content. I have a feeling this is gonna have a low smoke taste, but it smells great. It's gonna taste great. And I'm pretty sure I have got all that meat. Oh gosh. Th this is hard. This is hard. I could eat this whole thing. I thankfully have lost a little bit of weight lately but it's hard. I am going to, I've been trying to just eat less. So. Okay. I got this full tray. Uh, it's a little heavier and this full tray um, end up having juices on the bottom. The full tray is solid. I don't want to take it out of there. I'm just going to double line that tray and then I'm going to put that on there. I'm going to take out a bit though. Put it down on these juices that dripped on this foil tray. find out what this tastes like. I'm going to cover this, put it back in my warmer until it gets served. I really, okay, yeah. All right. Oh, man. Mm. Little, very little smoke taste. Mm. But tremendous flavor, big flavor. That is so good. Mm. Amazing. Okay. But again, I can taste the uh, great grill taste, or the, the you know the the, the cooking process. The the pellets, um, but not a lot of smoke. So I'm gonna have to dial that in. 
maybe um, using that low smoke setting like I did for the brisket the other day is gonna really um, help produce that. And then I definitely gotta make sure I'm in there um, constantly feeding new logs. I did run this, uh, these at higher temps, 275 I should say, uh, pretty much the whole time instead of anything lower, just because I was I was cooking the ham and things I wanted done, I wanted done faster. So definitely can spend more time on it and probably get some more smoke taste. But I really did love the, the cooking process, how easy that all was. Mm. It's amazing. Okay. So That is it. Um, I mean, this cooker's uh, pretty nice. I, do, I definitely love the way it retain heat, retains heat, uh, manages temps pretty steadily uh, without a lot of fluctuation, has a lot of fun features and a lot of space. So I'm really enjoying cooking on this Pellet Pro Double D. See if I can't dial it in a little better to get more smoke taste. But even if I've got to move my meats over to Eileen the offset for a little while I don't mind I love that I can manage this uh, you know a bunch of piece of meat on here I can move them over there smoke them for a bit move them back over here wrap them finish them this is gonna be a great tool in my arsenal I'm gonna be able to do a lot more with it so anyways thanks for watching until next time